guys and welcome to Hata Gastro. Today we will be talking about plumber vinson syndrome. So what is plumber vinson syndrome? plumber vinson syndrome is a rare disease characterized by the triad of microcytic hypochromic anemia, which is actually an iron deficiency anemia, atrophic glossitis, and the presence of esophageal webs or strictures. Sometimes dysphagia and chiliosis are also present. The web, which contains only the mucosa and submucosal layers, occurs at the anterior postcrocoid area of the upper esophagus. So below you can see some images of what all the above mentioned looks like. Here is an example of what an esophageal web looks like and this is on endoscopy and you can see here that it only involves the the two innermost layers. It's not the entire thickness of the esophageal wall, it's just the mucosa and submucosa. Image two shows the esophageal stricture, which is the narrowing of the esophageal tube. Image three shows an example of atrophic glossitis, and you can see here the tongue is actually very bald and smooth, and there's not a lot of markings that you can be able to see on the tongue. And these patients actually have a lot of pain in their tongue as well. So it's very sensitive and tender. The last image, or image four, shows an example of chiliosis. And this is a painful inflammation and the cracking of the corners of the mouth. Epidemiology. plumber vinson syndrome affects middle-aged women most frequently. And the peak age of incidence is over 50 years of age although it can occasionally present in children as well. So what are the causes of plumber vinson syndrome? The cause of plumber vinson syndrome is unknown. However, genetic factors and nutritional deficiencies may play a role. Prevention. A good nutrition with adequate intake of iron may prevent this disorder. So if you remember in the beginning, we mentioned that the disease is actually characterized by the triad of microcytic hypochromic anemia, which is actually an iron deficiency anemia, atrophic glossitis, and the esophageal web stricture. So here, our main concern is the iron deficiency anemia. And people who have a good nutrition with an adequate intake of iron can prevent the iron deficiency and therefore can prevent the development of plumber vinson syndrome. And something to note is that good nutrition should also include a balanced diet and exercise. So what are some clinical investigations we can perform to diagnose plumber vinson syndrome? Blood tests will show a microcytic hypochromic anemia. And basically, the iron levels will be very low, as well as ferritin levels, which will also be low. The barium swallow test may show the presence of webs or the strictures. And on the right here, I put an example of what the esophageal web looks like on a barium swallow. And this may need to be enhanced with video fluoroscopy. Biopsy may be required if malignancy is suspected clinically because in these patients, the esophageal squamous cell carcinoma risk is increased. Treatment. Iron replacement is efficiently achieved by oral means. There is rarely any need for parenteral iron. Supplements may be needed long term because after the initial correction of iron, it is important to maintain a normal iron status throughout the patient's life. Patients generally respond well to treatment and iron supplementation usually resolves the anemia and corrects the glossodynia, which is the tongue pain. So continuing with the treatment options, we can also do endoscopic dilatation or organ plasma coagulation therapy of the esophageal web or the stricture. And this is occasionally required in cases of persistent dysphagia. So you can imagine that the esophagus is normally a nice, thin, smooth tube. And now with the presence of these membranes sticking out, and we mentioned earlier that these membranes are made out of the mucosa and submucosal layers of the esophagus, so when they're sticking out, they're going to cause some difficulty in that food to pass down. And this difficulty in swallowing is called dysphagia. And we also said that these patients could have an esophageal stricture which develops. And this stricture is basically a narrowing of that esophageal tube. 
And this so-called stretching or narrowing is also going to cause dysphagia. So that food is not going to be able to pass that smoothly through this narrowing here. And what these patients actually require to treat this dysphagia or this difficulty in swallowing is dilatation, which basically means something is passed down endoscopically and dilates the tube and opens it up again so that food is able to pass down more freely. Thank you guys for watching. I hope the video was really informative and it gave you a general idea of what Plummer Vincent syndrome is all about. Please like, comment, subscribe and share and if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Thanks again and see you soon. Bye bye.